So this institute specialized in the research and study of contagious and infectious diseases. They also developed vaccines and protocols for many of the same contagious and infectious diseases. It's quite interesting to note that this place closed its doors only a few years prior to the COVID-19 outbreak. Anyway, this abandoned hospital institute is probably one of the best locations in the entire United States. And this video will show you exactly the reason why. So we just got in this abandoned hospital institute and it's a really cool place to explore. Uh, this is just a main office here and you can kind of tell that it's a little outdated. The computers are old, the paperwork is old and scattered about and stuff. But anyways, this uh, hospital institute was actually made to advance the knowledge of infectious diseases and to provide methods of prevention and care uh, for people that were suffering from infectious diseases. The state-of-the-art facility included equipment required for bacteriological, immunological, and pathological investigations and research. Shortly after the laboratory building opened, a local farmer ended up donating one of his suburban farms so that the institute could start using his farm animals to breed, study, research, and unfortunately test the animals in a laboratory setting. The patients that were treated at the institute were all referred by the local health department after they met a certain criteria, mainly patients that were diagnosed with diphtheria, scarlet fever, measles, mumps, whooping cough, and other infectious and contagious diseases. Only several years after first opening its doors, the primary purpose of the institute became focused on vaccination, which is quite wild to think about now with the current COVID pandemic. Anyway. The Institute gained a lot of publicity and attention when they began to not only manufacture vaccines, but they also distributed vaccines. In the 1920s, the Institute was said to have distributed over 100 million vaccines to different patients all across the country. We'll get a look at the medical records room here. Uh, that's a great way to store your medical records, tied up in a bag. And over here on the metal shelf, it looks like we have maybe microfish or microscope slide cases. These things would hold the actual slides. This is pretty interesting as they just discarded a bunch of biohazard material. And over here, it looks like blood samples. Here's a close up of some of the blood samples and the biohazard bags. So up here on the shelf is a, a wooden holder, it looks like, to hold blood tubes. And then down here, if you look close, you can see actual blood still left in the vials and, of course, the biohazard bags. Records show that in its first 20 years, the Institute treated and saved the lives of nearly 15,000 patients who might have otherwise fallen victim to the vast array of deadly and contagious diseases that plagued our country during the early years. And here's the other side of the lab, and this side actually had the sink. As we make our way over to the autopsy table room, I got a quick story. A few years ago, we explored this place, and none of us knew what was exactly in here. And we actually stumbled across the autopsy tables and the autopsy theater, making this place mind-blowing at the time because nobody had done it and we hadn't seen it. Many people also credit the Institute with developing safety protocols and personal protection equipment, otherwise known as PPE, for staff when they were managing and treating patients with contagious diseases and infections. During its heyday, the Institute also served as a vital educational purpose as the Institute provided clinical instructions to medical students, nurses, interns, and residents who receive specialized training before moving on to their professional careers. So these boxes of paperwork might not be anything, but the funny story is that these boxes of paperwork were all sitting on all these autopsy tables. And my friends and I, when we found it, actually cleared it off the tables, cleaned it off, and moved it over to this corner where they're still sitting now. 
Although the Institute did eventually close its doors for financial related reasons, the work of the Institute continued for many years into the future, some still being utilized today. In 1943, the Institute was taken over by a group of dedicated doctors to support research and educational programs designed to train physicians and other health professionals in the local area. The Institute was eventually absorbed into a local university hospital system where cutting edge research and high quality medical care were developed and are still the standards today. Let's get a look at this microscope room. Look at that cool control panel too, but look at the microscope. That thing is massive. I've never seen one that big. Probably used for like looking at DNA and blood and bodily fluids and cells and microorganisms. And look at that, some disposable lungs. What the hell? Uh, just some random boxes here of old paperwork and contracts and agreements and stuff like that. As we take a look at some of these empty rooms here, I got to tell you, when my friends and I found this place, we were so excited because of everything that was left with the autopsy theater and the actual autopsy tables that we kept it on the download for a long time. But people eventually found it like they always do. But it is definitely one of the best places in the country. And speaking of the autopsy theater, let's go take a look at it. Here we go. Look at this room. This room is amazing. The Institute eventually closed its doors in 2017 and is still sitting abandoned as of 2021. There is no doubt that the Institute's founders would certainly be pleased to see what would eventually come from all the years of hard work and research at the Institute especially as the world grapples with this everlasting current COVID-19 pandemic. Now let's take a look at the Surgical Research Laboratory. Here's inside uh, another one of the laboratories. Looks like there's some nice glassware right there on the ground and some empty boxes and supplies. Looks like some test tube holders over there. And it looks like we have some nice glassware in these drawers, some beakers, and looks like some flasks and stuff. And then over here, this is actually a blood monitoring system. Okay, so it appears that there's some tubing in this drawer, and it looks like some maybe some inhalers. And then there's some close-up of the blood monitoring droplets. And here it looks like we have one of the operating rooms. Now, obviously, this wasn't just an ordinary hospital. So these rooms are probably more like exam rooms, prep rooms, or like dissection rooms. We say that because you can clearly see that there's a lab room connected to it over here. And then as you walk through this area, you can see a couple more rooms with operating lights also in them, most likely used for the same thing. And I'm telling you, these operating lights were actually one of the very first things that we discovered when me and my friends came in here. And lo and behold, we had no idea what awaited us. Unfortunately, this place did do testing on animals for research. So that's what this room is, is actually the holding room for animals. And these were probably for larger animals such as dogs. And you can actually see that each gate has a food bowl and a water bowl actually connected to it. Here's a temperature log for the animals that were either waiting to be tested or recovering from after being tested. Now here we see an old green colored laboratory. This lab actually seems to be a bit more old school. Uh, you can note the burners in each one of these. And in the back here, there's a few autoclaves which were used for sanitizing tools and utensils and things like that. Back over here, to the actual lab working area, you can see the fume hoods and ventilation hoods for research and testing in the lab. 
as we pan over to this other area, looks like it's another lab. This one has drafting tables and seating and research papers just kind of thrown about. Hmm. Not even about to guess what toxic substance this is, nor do we even want to get close to it. And over here in this corner, we see an old school stainless steel gurney. Those are always creepy to see in a bando. This room appears to be a supply room of some sorts. The supplies are mostly just old boxes of paperwork and random stuff, but uh, there's some actual glassware back there. Looks like there's some pipettes, beakers, droppers, blood tubes, test tubes, measuring glasses, funnels, and even some flasks. Those are always cool to see. This is an old control panel for an x-ray machine. You can see the radiation stand right here and the uh, operating light on the other side where they actually would take the x-ray. Now this is quite random here. This is an old autopsy table just sitting here chilling. This is yet another older research lab. This one definitely hasn't been used in a long time. You can see ceiling panels starting to fall down and debris all over. And you can see some old school monitors too. And we can see here that there's four fume hoods all lined up next to each other. This is where they would do chemical mixing and testing. And here we have another older laboratory. This one actually looks like it's being used more for storage purposes than any research. And unfortunately, that is the end for the Abandoned Institute and Research Center. We really hope that you guys enjoyed this one. This is one of the best abandoned locations in the country. So hopefully you guys enjoy it as much as we did. Thank you guys so much for the support. And please subscribe to Abandoned Central to get all of the latest videos. Thank you.